Welcome, YouTube and any Energist investors who might be watching. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing the contents of this box. Look to this box and enjoy it. I'm excited about what's in this box. It is a PSAP, or a personal sound amplification product, colloquially known as a hearing aid, but we don't use that word, mm -hmm, no, 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 because hearing aid is an FDA regulated term, and therefore you need a prescription to get that. This you can buy off the shelf, but I'm not reviewing this because I'm going hard of hearing. I'm reviewing this because it has a very special technology inside. It has a chipset designed by Energis and built by Dialog Semiconductor. It is the world's first wireless charging RF based solution, as far as I know. Either way, it's among the first, let's put it that way. As an aside, why I'm even shooting this video to begin with is because the only thing people ever wanted out of Energis to kind of prove out that, hey, this is real stuff, we aren't bullshitting, it was just demonstration video basic demo can we like light a light bulb from a distance like here's i don't know i don't understand their marketing angle and so here we are demo video tear down video all of that if you don't know energis is, is a company that for the better part of the decade has been trying to develop this wireless charging technology if you go on their website it shows you this utopian version of the world where you walk into a room and much in the same way that your phone can automatically connects to Wi-Fi and you get internet, it connects to this wireless energy transmitter and starts charging. And if you think about the application of a, such a technology, if it was real, mind boggling, billions of dollars. Imagine just CCTV cameras. You can just stick them anywhere you want. No cables, no internet, it's all wireless. Remotes, game controllers, phones, uh, I, anything IoT based, I mean, crazy shit if this was ever released. And if you're an Energis investor, you've been kind of strung along by the CEO who uses carefully crafted language. Language that he knows the SEC won't bust him for. Language like might, maybe, probably, could be. As long as he uses those magic words, any investor might say, oh yeah, it's happening imminently. Whereas anyone else looking in and say, I don't know if this is going to happen. And remember, this has been <laughs> ongoing for a very long time. And I know Energist investors are sick of the CEO's shit because the stock price is at like $3 these days. It peaked out at like almost 30 bucks at peak Energist madness when they first got FCC approval for their mid-range charging solutions. And speaking of mid-range, they want to release this in three steps. Near field, mid field, far field. Near field being almost contact based, like existing key or cheap platforms. Mid field, one to three feet. And far field, the utopia inversion, well, 15 feet or more of charging distance. So, without any further ado, let's get into Nikola Tesla's 100 year old dream of wireless charging. So, as far as wireless charging is concerned, you're probably familiar with, you know, wireless toothbrushes and the key or chi based charging. And that is, two coils and it's inductive based. This is a bit different in that it works on RF or radio frequency, much in the same way that Wi-Fi works. So here it is. So you have this wireless charging pad and the advantage of this is as follows. You can put two of these PSAPs on it at the same time to charge which is inherently an advantage over coil-based charging because with coils, you have to orient them exactly where the coil is. So usually you don't see a pad that has multiple charging points. So that's an interesting advantage. So let's turn this on and see how it works. All right, let's plug it in. Got a button out here in the back. It starts blinking. I believe it works on two frequencies. There is an FCC ID here on the back. I looked it up. And there's two frequencies that this answers to, about 2.4 gigahertz, which is Bluetooth, and 918 megahertz, which is what I believe the wireless charging actually operates on. So, press this button in the back. Once this but uh, light turns green, that means it's ready to charge. Here, I have the actual PSAP. And as I bring it closer and closer to it, we can see a light turn on. Let me zoom in a bit here. The light gets brighter and dimmer depending on the distance I am from this pad. Now remember, I can be anywhere on this pad and it starts to charge. So it doesn't really have to be in these cradles. It can be anywhere. And if you look here, 
just to show you that indeed there, there can be a gap between this thing. It still seems relatively effective even at a distance of about two centimeters, maybe three, and it still charges. That's very fascinating. The instruction manual says once this is charged, it will automatically turn off. I have not found that to be exactly the case. It actually seems to operate on a timer, an exact timer. After about three hours, this will turn off. Now I have observed it and so it, it does indeed turn off after three hours, but then I can turn it back on. I can put the PSAC back on it and it resumes charging, which is, which is strange. So there isn't any circuitry, it seems to me, inside of here that actually can tell that this device is fully charged. It's timer based, which is kind of a cop out. So it's either to protect this pad, which I have noticed gets somewhat hot, or they just, you know, this is lazy design and they just approximate, yeah, we think that the battery will be charged after three hours. As for does it work, I mean, yes, it does. I don't know how well because I don't have any hearing issues, but I can definitely hear it amplifying sound. That, that's not really what I'm reviewing this for. Some people have dismissed this tech as fake news, but I want to put that to rest. In my hand here is a spectrum analyzer. What it does is it measures the strength of an electromagnetic field in decibel uh, milliwatts, D or dBm, at a particular frequency. So the FCC filing says this operates at 918 megahertz. And as you can see, as I sweep it, the strength of the field changes um, depending where I am. It's kind of the strongest in the middle. Their FCC filing claims that should, the strongest you should measure is about 28 dBm or about 0.6 watts. The most I could get is about 26 or about 0.4 watts, so I'm in pretty close agreement even without any super fancy antennas to point at this thing. Also note that despite the fact that I knocked it off, knocked the PSAP off the pad, there's still the same strength electric field. I thought that maybe the Bluetooth was there to track where the device is in space, but I guess that's not really the case. As I sweep it across, you can see a changing um, in strength. The bigger the number, the stronger the field. And of course, the farther away I am in terms of you know height, distance from the pad, it also changes. It drops off rather rapidly because I believe the strength of an electromagnetic field drops off as an inverse square. So for the purposes of this video, let's do a bit of a teardown, shall we? Torx bits here. Whoa, well, that's interesting. This is all some kind of strange heat sink here. Oh, those are teeny tiny Torx bits. All right, all right, all right. God damn, that's a lot of torque. Oh, but I can see, pretty sure if I, po this probably just pops off. That's right, there it goes. Now we should be able to, yes. Okay, so it's just a simple radiating antenna. There's nothing here that will be like doing a pocket forming like in their fancier um, pipe dreams. That is one hell of a heat sink. Let's take that apart next. We might have some thermal paste going on here. Oh, there it goes. So nothing to this, this is just Verily, very roughly machined part. Big fat heat sink. Here we have, oh ho. So this entire PCB was done by, or at least designed by Energis. So it's not just the chip. Volga version eight. Interesting. I didn't know they were a bunch of Russians. All right, let's look for those dialogue chips. The DA series chips. This is probably just a little board and power amplifier of sorts. I've already scraped off some of this thermal paste. All right, with all the thermal paste removed, let's have a look here. We've got three chips from Dialog, as far as I can tell. One of which I believe is Energis. So the, the Dialog DA3210, which is a single channel CMOS RF power amplifier. That's directly from Dialog's website. Then we have the Dialog DA4100 fully integrated watt-up power transmitter IC. So 
This comes directly from Energist, that is their design. I imagine this PCB is definitely also an Energist design, perhaps. And then finally we have this, oh, so, so hard to read, Dialog DA14680, which is, I believe, their Bluetooth module. Yes, it, it's got basically a little microprocessor, um, flash, RAM, ROM, a timer. It's basically a power management unit and it supports Bluetooth 4.2. So this is where the whole Bluetooth comes from. And that's, that's about the most exciting stuff I can tell from here. Now, as for the PSAP, I will make an attempt to take it apart, but I don't want to break it because it's all on loan. But it should have the DA2100 in it, I believe. Okay, uh, yeah, I think I broke the hinge here. That's okay. That's still fixable, I suppose. All right, I managed to pull it out. Here we are looking at the biggest chip on the PCB, labeled as 2210, and I believe that stands for DA2210, the Energist Watt Up our receiver. The antenna, I believe, is coiled right around the battery casing here to the left side. You can see kind of how it wraps around the battery case. I think that's the antenna. And so that was the Delight PSAP wireless charging pad with Energist wireless charging technology. Is it the super duper groundbreaking thing that's going to change everything? No, I don't think so. It does offer interesting advantages. And it's also interesting because Energist claims their technology is backwards compatible. So if they do ever release the holy grail with a w actual wireless transmitter that can go up to 15 feet, technically the PSAP or, um, well, what's left of it should be able to be charged wirelessly. So that's, that's very interesting. And I mean, gosh, I hope they pull it off. If you found the information in this video useful, I would very much appreciate it if you click the link below and bought me a coffee, so to speak. It's like a tip jar. It's an online tip jar. Don't take any advice from me whatsoever about investing in anything. <laughs> Just don't. I'm probably worse than Jim Cramer. And of course, don't forget to charge that like button and wirelessly charge that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.